this morning. Uh, welcome to the first session. We're going to spend looking at uh, how to grapple with the question of standardizing file formats so that we as a, as a community of both uh, simulation users and simulation uh, tool designers and simulation tool implementers uh, can make sure that we are, are doing the, the best kind of things that our, our users uh, can have uh, for doing the science they need to do. Because we are all uh, fundamentally here to, to make sure that we can do good science with uh, the, the time resources that we have available. So my name is Mark Abraham. I'll be chairing the session today. Uh, I come to you wearing uh, one of the hats from BioXL, which is the, the primary sponsor of all this uh, project. I, I lead the work package one within uh, BioXL that deals primarily with software development, <coughs> uh, a large number of European, uh, sorry, uh, a small number of high impact European applications, <laughs> uh, chiefly Gromax and uh, Haddock, which are uh, applications that we will hear further from uh, from the two other contributors to this session, Alexander Bofan and, and Eric Lindahl, who are both here. So they uh, respectively uh, lead the uh, Haddock docking code uh, development effort uh, and also the, the Gromex development effort. But they too have another rather, number of other hats in the community uh, and will be uh, privileged today to, to learn from their, their long experience, what they see as needs and, and how they see uh, best we can uh, grapple with some of those. So having heard a little bit from me to set some stage, we'll throw to them, they will uh, share their, their ideas and expertise, expertise with us. Uh, then we'll move into the games joining phase as we did uh, yesterday. So you can all see our lovely sailboats here, which we'll use as, as models. And I will, I will pose to you some, some ideas that we can uh, break off to in those groups. Uh, and then we can proceed uh, and hopefully have some fruitful discussions, bringing together all the disparate ideas and experience that we, we have in the group. Just as a reminder of what we were all here to, to discuss last night, as, as Matthew brought to us, that we, we're here to discuss, to, to find the, the ideas that we all have in our own minds from our, our own individual past experiences. We want to find the kernels of best practice that we have already, sometimes identify what we need to create as best practice, because our, our existing things are, are legacy best practice that we need to move as uh, the state of the art moves. Uh, we need to highlight the issues that, that do exist, we need to find new solutions. We've identified that currently we have problems that maybe were good solutions 10 years ago, but no longer fit. Uh, we need to, as a community, to be prepared to move on from them. And finally, we need to make sure that we have produced enough ideas and have a sufficiently round of discussion that we can produce a community white paper that people can use moving forward to be able to propose funding for projects that actually implement uh, some of the, the tools that we might propose or the formats that we might discuss. Um, so it's important for us to produce this concrete output uh, so that community as a whole can move forward from a discussion rather than just generate a bunch of entropy and stuff. So my take on trying to evolve standard file formats is that we, we need to first of all start to understand what our user community really do need. Many of us already have that kind of knowledge in the back of our heads somewhere. Many of us have grown up from being simulation users and perhaps now tool developers or research PIs or other leaders in the field. Um, some of our experience starts getting a bit dated, so we need to remember, of course, that we should go back to the people who are actually living in the coalface and remember to talk to them about their problems, not just the ones we remember from being students three years ago. So we need to make sure that we take the ideas that come from uh, the expertise we have gathered here and, and go back out to other members of the community. There's, there's many other stakeholders that uh, whose views we need to make sure we try to represent now um, and to, to act as a citizen later on. Successful file formats, as with all kinds of standards, have to grapple with the, the N plus one standard format. I'm sure we're all familiar with the, the classic XKCD where people say, there's a problem, there's N different file formats, what we should do is design one true file format that will unify everybody's use cases, we have N plus one standards, and two years later the same discussion happens again. One of the challenges with that is that when you try to design a file format, you only have a limited set of use cases in mind. So one of my chief proposals today is that we need to focus on things like mod modularity and extensibility of the ways in which we store data, not necessarily file formats, uh, so that we have the ability to cater to future needs. We, while we have some good file formats that have been useful in the past out there, they clearly don't cater to all of the possible use cases that we will dream up in the future. We are in the business of doing research, we should not be targeting, yes, I need the perfect file format for what I can conceive of doing today, we should have something that also has the possibility of being usable in five to ten years' time, or in some other beautiful European capital in five to ten years, we're having yet another workshop for how we move to the state of the art. So, 
I want us to have uh, in the forefront of that the, the ability to search for solutions that are able to be extended, that are able to be implemented by the tool providers in a way that means the users just say, I, I have this file, this object storage model, the details of how it lives on disk or in the cloud or elsewhere should not be in the forefront of our user's mind. We want them thinking about how do I design and execute a simulation, how do I analyze my results, how do I uh, advance society's understanding of, of these kinds of properties that we're trying to simulate. In building a standard, you need to also evolve a community around that standard. Uh, so in my uh, day job as the developer of Gromax, uh, I've been able to see somewhat from afar the, the evolution of the standard both in C++, both programming models to OpenMP and, and MPI. Each of those hasn't evolved from a group of people uh, that met together to realize that we have a need. Nobody appointed them, the, the standards body. They got together and recognized that this would be a good thing for our community. And as I don't know what it was, or Matthew said yesterday, the legitimacy comes from actually doing the thing that you, you do. If you, you gather together a group of people uh, and you do something credible, you won't get everything right. None of these standards ever got anything right. We won't get anything right either. Um, but we need to make, move, move forward and, and recognize that not doing anything is the enemy of, of everything. Um, we don't have to try to get perfection in our first step. So we need to have in mind that as we would move towards some sort of standardization process, we need to try and build a community uh, of people who represent the different stakeholders. We need some people who are users, we need some people who are uh, research PIs, we need some people who are responsible for maintaining long-term data storage, we need some tool implementers, we need some analysis, we need maintainers. All these kinds of people need need to, to be at the table in order for us to have a credible standard. So that's something we should have in, in our back of our minds for the next year or two uh, if we're able to, to evolve something that can lead towards standard file formats. We have also a community who are prepared to move that forward. We should make sure that we have a, ref ref a reference implementation in mind. It does us no good to, to spend um, hours here theory crafting if what we would do can't, would actually be able to be implemented uh, by people who are actually able to implement it. So that's, that's something we need to bear in mind. Um, we need to be able to work on code that will be valid for storing the data we currently have now, as well as how we see things will move in the next five to ten years. When we would have such a sample uh, proposed standard available, we would need to make available to the community some standard files in that. So someone's going to need to do some upfront work to actually say, hey, the community, here is how a trajectory in this file format would look. Please tell us what is good and bad. Would you be able to implement your tool? Would your analysis package be able to handle this? What would your registries be able to do with this file format? Does it, does it meet your needs? Does what, what do we need to uh, change in it uh, before we even get to the first point of standardizations? And I will encourage all of us to start by assuming that models and file formats you're already most familiar with aren't suitable. We're very likely to have to move on from the state of the art. Remember that you too have only a small part of the picture. You're holding the elephant's leg or the elephant's trunk. You don't see the whole elephant. Hopefully, between us, we can all hold pieces of the elephant. Uh, okay, we forward to a, a better future. Next, a quick word about what we're not trying to actually do today. Um, here are just some things that have came up in, in my searching around this topic as things that we're not talking about either in this workshop or in this session. We're not worried about that how data sets will be citable, we're not worried about how we're going to piece together simulations into large workflows, we're not worried so much about simulation management, what's the process of designing a simulation, how do I visualize my results, how do I understand what is going on in the complex machinery that is a molecular simulation, how we analyze our archive share, all these sorts of things are things that we need to have on our horizon, but we're not going to directly talk about those, those today, I feel. If people have different ideas, I hope that will come through in the, the group discussion, Forward, but as a session chair, these are the sorts of things I, I feel are uh, things we should have off the table today just so that we have uh, managing problems. And naturally, of course, we are far too small and far too select a community to actually agree on a standard, and we certainly don't have enough time today to, to actually make substantial progress in that direction. What we can do is set, set a ball rolling uh, and uh, allow other people to redirect it as they see fit. So now I would particularly invite contributions from people so that we have good boundary conditions for the, the subsequent group discussion. <coughs> Critical in any discussion of, of file formats are what do we think people's needs actually are. Uh, so I come from a, a strong molecular dynamics background, but I have a little bit of other computational science experience as well. Uh, there may be things that you people perceive as needs that are, are not on my radar. If you see things up here that you think don't belong or that you think are missing from up here, 
I'd very much love to, to hear from, from you now so that we can help all move together as a, uh, a discussion community. I use this often need to describe the calculation I want to do. That comes in many different forms. Does anyone feel this thing's missing here? Yes, John? So th th there's not a description of what it is, what the chemical matter it is, or the, the, the th physical thing that you're si uh, simulating in this case. Um, you're, you have the model physics, but mm -hmm. that can be divorced entirely from the actual chemical species that's being modeled. Yeah. And so it's, it's difficult to go back to interpretability if you, you're missing that information. And well, there's no standard we have for describing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's in, in like the dynamic simulations, that's often implicit. I have, I have some coordinates I'm wanting topology, but it's very known discoverable lot in fact what this thing is. So in a classic, it's basically our formats. You you lose things like formal charges because you've actually lost the chemical information about and the types bonding. What is the formal charge on the system? We're trying to rediscover that kind of information. Our fact is extremely difficult because you can't just take points with charges and we're supposed to try to get formal, but points connected and actually work out actually what chemical species this was originally. Mm -hmm. So would we say that that the two aspects, Chris, yeah, trying to talk about? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah there's all the way from formal charge models all the way through to which state of which ion channel is this? Yes, uh, there's, there's, yeah. there's a full gamut of yeah. information that's completely missing in the world. And the model of physics includes the parameters there. Yeah? Uh, yes, I mean there's we have this because discussion. Because you might use a Coulomb potential with a five extra cutoff, which is probably not an idea. Sure. Still the same physics. Yes, uh, those, those are two key aspects that are, I'm currently grouping together in one physics. They don't have to be together. I mean, one of John's classic ones is things to do with <coughs> some package, in the interface, some packages put things like um, the shape parameters in the file format, and some packages put the shape parameters in the control input files, and some packages are in grow packs that in multiple places. And again, it's that kind of information, which is almost, there's a distinction between what is the thing we're modeling and how we're modeling it. And those two things are actually two different things. And if you bundle, trying to bundle what is the thing we're modeling with how we're modeling it together into one place actually makes file formats that are very difficult to work with because ultimately you're trying to create a file which is both capturing trajectory data and capturing checkpoints and things mm -hmm. like that and restarting simulations but all the data which is how am I actually going to do stuff with it is then encapsulated with that and trying to merge the two together. But actually what you want is data which is this is the molecular system, this is the chemical system where it's the molecules, what they're doing, and then I want to take those molecules and I want to be docking on them, and then I want to do a good dynamics and I want to build a quantum chemistry package or then I want to render them. And so the information you need to do those different tasks should be in the file that describes this is the actual chemistry of the molecules. Well, on the other hand, once you, when you get the trajectory, and you just have the trajectory, the trajectory without how it had been obtained, you, you lose a lot of the interpretability. It's difficult to interpret the trajectory if you do not know what's behind and how it has been produced. You could have two files, one on how and one on what. Yeah. But then if you have, it's, it has its own challenges in there. It means that you have to have these two files together in sync and be sure that you can get one from uh, and, the other, and the others. And that they will not be spread and dispersed. But equally, if I have one file that says, this is how I did it, I could then have a million trajectory all using that one file, but this is how I did it. And actually, this is how I did it is such a huge space. In terms of there's a million, I mean, beyond just molecular dynamics, there's a million different ways you could how I did it. And so actually trying to merge the trajectory information with the how I did it is effectively the, the simplest thing you can do is just zip the two together. And now I would say that's probably the easiest thing rather than actually trying to create a file format that includes the every single possibility yes, of how I did it. That's end up being a file format. It's a zip with the stuff in it. Yeah. So it sounds sure. as if there is not at all a consensus over whether we should just have the data or also have the workflow in the file format. It sounds like a point for the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep, that will be something that I think we can usually discuss in our small groups. Um, thank you for the contribution so far. Um, so yes, there's, there's a number of other things I've commented on there. Is there anything else people would want to talk about? I call that experimental data there because we're moving into a, a regime where we want to try and not just have the force field and our model description as, as how we uh, describe simulations. So can I strongly suggest one thing? Things what we must have there, not what we can have there. Yeah. Because we've been through this at ten, 10 times. And what happens is that everybody agrees on great ideas of who will provide the funding for this without, or who will provide the manpower for this without any funding to maintain it indefinitely. So I think that thing comes down to is what is this file format for? Is this actually for the like, dynamic trajectory data that's missed it? So is it's a scope question? So I guess just to keep the station kind of uh, in the shape, <laughs> uh, it's very nice and interesting discussion. What we could do is maybe keep your slide for the group discussion. Sure. And make the discussion out of it. And we might come up with some ideas or at least things in group discussions. Mm -hmm. We put everything together and then we keep that as a support for the for the main discussion. Sure. Good night. Uh, moving from inputs to outputs. Are there critical things for molecular simulation outputs that people would have to answer? Often when you're generating thousands of trajectories, it might be useful to compute properties on the fly so that you amortize the cost for having to reprocess lots of trajectories. So, um, the ability to store arbitrary observables of, of some sort or mechanical properties is often extremely useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I am viewing that as part of process analysis, whether they go into the same file you write or not. It's well, some, yeah. something of implementation. Sure, right. uh, yeah, I think that's roughly done with that. So I think it's a need to do this with us. Those are cool. Okay, so you call it okay, using coordinates. So language that we use coordinates can mean basically a different position of velocity. velocity. So your this is this is P and Q. It's all coordinates. <laughs> <laughs> Any time dependent state, perhaps. Any time dependent state is a coordinate. Okay. Sometimes not state, but one forces which are not state. Um, so yeah, it's very difficult to find a general flaw that everybody agrees on. So I've forecast some of my take already. Uh, I think we very much need to move towards a, a container uh, style approach. Many of our legacy formats were uh, things that people developed over the preceding decades, very much with, uh, I'm implementing this tool, I need to get some data out on disk, uh, there's no existing community or standard, so I just need to do something. We've learned lessons from what they did, did well, what they did badly, so we should be one from those. Um, and with view of not needing to continue having these kinds of discussions, we need to work on approaches that are intrinsically extensible. Uh, we shouldn't need to meet again in five years' time and go, oh, we redefine what molecular simulations mean, not a file for work. Uh, we should be moving towards things that uh, will be able to be extended by the tool providers of the day while being able to maintain that compatibility. So things like um, Models we can see in the audiovisual community where there might be a file format with multiple codecs that describe the ways to interpret the contents of the individual containers within the, the, the file or the object store uh, are ways that I think we, we need to move. Uh, even within the Gromix projects, about 10 years ago, we spent all the effort implementing the, the TNG uh, file format that is both the, the object store and containing numerous kinds of containers with different kinds of data and also the codec for sophisticated compression of uh, both time and spatially uh, coupled down, which is extremely efficient. There's no reason why we can't take those codecs and use them in other file formats. We should be very much thinking in terms of all these approaches. Uh, people are going to come up with different domain-specific compression algorithms. If we design, try to design one true file format without thinking of it differently, we won't be doing it in our community of valid service. We generally need to think about both human and machine readability for some of our files. 
humans obviously aren't going to sit and read a whole, whole molecular directory, but they absolutely need to be able to read the metadata. We need to be able to extract that from the, from the file. We need to make sure that we can annotate our files after we have written them without disturbing the uh, integrity of the blocks of simulation data that are contained within it. So often we need to run a bunch of simulations and we realize that some of these are more interesting than others or more valuable than others. You can annotate those afterwards while still preserving things like internal checksums of uh, particular buckets of data. Uh, so that when we come to finish up the project, we have to move our working set of simulation data to long term store, that the ability to, to update the, the relevant pieces of metadata uh, goes along with the ability to know that we, have, we, are, we are still storing our original trajectory data where we intend to, and we're still we're storing post process stuff where we intend to. Uh, we should also be able to describe something about the input that produced it. As Joe was pointing out, that's, that leads to a whole bunch of what, what, is, a, what is a simulation description, how, how big is a workflow description, uh, this is a, a, a thorny question. Um, we will likely need different solutions for different needs. We aren't going to design one true molecular simulation file format. Uh, we have <coughs> needs for input, needs for output, needs for large amounts of compressed trajectory data, and needs for human readable topologies that you have in the grad in a normal text browser and uh, So we will need to come up with combinations of things that are meeting our multiple needs. And we should also take in mind that there are many other communities out there that have dealt with similar kinds of challenges. So the, the, the QM people also have to write out large amounts of, of uh, data about, in their case, typically things like molecular orbitals and so forth. Astronomy too has very long time scale simulations. We should be checking what, what data formats do they use, how they solve their problems. Uh, Biophysics likewise has to take in large amounts of input data and then process those what we need to learn from them, material science and so on. Um, and of course the, the audiovisual community will already have uh, used to grapple with these problems in a very similar way. So let's now throw to uh, two of our experts here, uh, perhaps Eric first and then Alexandra.